With me today is Nancy Eisenberg. She is the Mary Frances Bernard Chair of, in 19th Century American History at the University of Tulsa. She received her PhD at the University of Wisconsin and has written extensively on issues of politics and law. Uh, she has written uh, several other books. She is here tonight to talk about Fallen Founder, The Life of Aaron Burr, and it is a finalist in the Oklahoma Book Awards this year. And Nancy, why did you decide to write about Aaron Burr? Well, initially I was interested in Aaron Burr because I was interested in scandal. I was curious about the role of scandal in democracies, in American history, and Burr is a perfect subject because he essentially has been treated as the bad boy of the founders, uh, as the villain, um, and he's usually compared negatively to Washington, Jefferson, Adams, and I didn't, I sort of assumed there was something wrong there. It was too simple. I mean, often history uses villains, it creates villains, but if you really get in and do the research, you realize that that's often not the case. History is more complicated. It isn't just good versus evil. Well, I appreciate one of the things you said in your book, which is history is not a bedtime story. Hmm. And I, I think you uh, amply dem demonstrate that with this, because I, I was looking back, what have I heard about Aaron Burr? Well, he killed somebody in a duel, and he was <laughs> a bad man. Uh, I hadn't gotten to the, all the sex scandal about him in, in my reading of, of history, but I can remember he was just sort of skipped over, bad guy, let's go on to these other people. So is this is something that you found out as you started to do the research? Well, I mean, what you've mentioned is true. What most people know about Aaron Burr is that he killed Alexander Hamilton in a duel in 1804, that he was Jefferson's first vice president, and then was accused of treason, and that he's a womanizer. Um, there's been more fiction written about Burr than history. Uh, and fiction writers sort of created even more elaborate myths about Burr. And unfortunately, a lot of those myths have been incorporated into historical portraits of Burr. Um, and, and that's what led me also to sort of figuring out what role did sex slander and sexual attacks and character assassin, assassination play in the politics of the, the 1790s and the early 1800s. Well, and you certainly make the point that uh, when we talk today about, oh, the, the terrible uh, personal attacks that politicians make on each other, oh, you know, what's happening <laughs> to this country? And you go back and look at that and you think, you know, we've come a long way. Since <laughs> right. Well, that's what people don't realize. I mean, at least today, newspapers have to pretend to have a source when they spread gossip or rumor. Back then, the newspapers were openly partisan. They repeated unsubstantiated rumors. They would invent things. And they would, I mean, in, in Burr's case, for example, when he's running for governor in 1804, one newspaper claims that his house was a bordello, which had mirrors on the wall, and all of his supporters gathered there for wild orgies. So I think it gives you a, a flavor of what the politics of the time was really like. Well, you also made the point that uh, a lot of his personal papers were lost when mm -hmm. his uh, daughter's ship was lost, but also he didn't have uh, descendants who were uh, working very hard to set the record right. straight. I think this is also something we don't think about. We have to remember that history is created by the archive. Mm -hmm. What papers are preserved? What papers do we have access to to uncover the historical context of the times? And in Burr's case, yes, his daughter unfortunately was killed in a shipwreck, Many of his papers were lost, but we, I mean, what is also true, a, there was a, a wonderful editing project that was set up by the New York Public Library. They, they tracked down his papers. A lot of his papers had been sold off. Um, but the other problem is a lot of people don't want to read all of his preserved papers because they're on microfilm. I mean, this is why I have glasses, you know, <laughs> reading microfilm in graduate school. It's a lot of work. So you really have to, you can't just go to the library, as in the case in the Jefferson papers, and just pull the nice, edited, published volumes off the shelf. You, it takes more work to figure out Burr. Mm -hmm. And so you have to go through a, an immense editing process, I would think. 
Um, you mean in terms of, of what what do you keep in, what do you leave out? I mean, you you've read everything mm. you can find about Aaron right. Burr, but obviously you don't really detail every every bit of it in right. this book. Right. I mean, and that's what every historian has to do. You can't. I mean, history is. I mean, if you were doing a an edi edited documentary collection, then you would include everything. But you do have to make choices. Um, some of the information that I use that's not in the text is in the footnote. Uh, if I want to back up and verify what I'm saying, and that's why footnotes and endnotes are so important. You can really tell if somebody knows what they're talking about if they have good footnotes. Uh, but yes, you have to make choices. And in Burr's case, um, I read letters that I know people have never taken the time to read because they're difficult to read. You have people who have handwriting that's very difficult to decipher. But I really needed to take the time to figure out what was in that letter because it was important to recovering who Burr really was. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think you have done a very good job of presenting a, a brilliant man who was uh, among other things, a feminist, which warmed my heart quite a bit. <laughs> and <laughs> I still re remember uh, Mrs. Adams, remember the ladies and the replies she got. Mm. Uh, but you have also managed to present what uh, his flaws uh, were, and the, I think also show that somebody with the, the uh, potential that he had, the character he had, could still get some really crazy ideas that could lead to his downfall. Well, I mean, what are the, I mean, what I like to emphasize about Burr is that, first of all, he was not a villain. He was a very modern and liberal politician. He supported suffrage reforms. He was a captivating courtroom attorney. Um, he was very good at organizing new methods for sort of developing parties in the 1790s. But you're right. I mean, the other point that I try to make in this book is that he was a human being, that we tend at times to put the founders on pedestals and we imagine them wearing their powdered wigs and giving their sublime speeches. But the truth is they were humans. They engaged in these risky speculative ventures, which is one element that, of the histories they never pay attention to. Um, they made bad personal mistakes. And the point is we need the whole picture. We need the complete picture. And that's what I'm also trying to do. This book is not just about Burr. It's a way to reevaluate the, the founders in general and to sort of realize that these, that what makes them actually really interesting is that they are complicated people, that they're not perfect, they're not moral paragons, they're not people that we just sort of think of as great men. Right, <laughs> they're right. human beings. Yeah, uh, I think you had another phrase in there. I kept finding phrases mm. that, that you wrote that mm. I really enjoyed, and this one was, that our, our founders were imperfect men in a less than perfect nation. And I think you've done a, a brilliant job of that. Mm. No, and I think that's really important for appreciating history. I mean, I'm hoping that, and I've, I've, what's nice, I've gotten so many nice letters from people who have read this book and said that I've changed their mind. But I think that if you read this book, you'll love history even more. I think you'll, you'll appreciate the difficulties these people faced at this period of time. And you'll understand that politics you know, was just as rough and tumble, if not worse, than it is today. But it, it, it really shows why we have the political system we have today. Mm -hmm. um, that there are links, there are connections to the role of parties, to the role of slander or attack ads. I mean, that's the reason why he ended up dueling with Hamilton. Essentially, there was an attack ad put in a newspaper uh, that claimed that Alexander Hamilton had said something, you know, very, he had sort of called Burr despicable um, and had attacked his, you know, personal and professional honor. Um, and this is what we tend not to realize. We tend not to realize that we need, you know, the whole picture to understand the nuance of politics, to realize that these people, there were things about the past that is not exactly the same today. Um, and you really have to sort of figure out their language, their way of looking at the world. Right. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Nancy Eisenberg has been here talking about Fallen Founder, A Life of Aaron Burr. It is a finalist for the Oklahoma Book Awards this year.